Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another updated and fun-filled action-packed edition of This Week in Weather, a special focus on Hurricane Michael. And in particular, I'm going to focus mostly here on North Carolina, Virginia, and Delmarva, because I think there are some things which are being missed by some other forecasters, and I think it needs a lot of attention here. So let's get right into it and see what I'm talking about and see if my concerns are warranted or not. So we'll start up by taking a look right here. This was very interesting from Eric Blake, a hurricane forecaster at the National Hurricane Center. This obviously is from Weatherscope, and of course, which is the at best the radar app that you can get on the internet and for your smartphone. And you can see very clearly that it has made landfall at uh, the Air Force Base here. Uh, very nicely, I believe it's at Elgin Air Force Base or uh, is that Tidenol? Yeah, T-Y-N-D-A-L. I think you can see it right about. I'm going to mark it out here so you can see it. Um, yeah, here. You can see it right there. So this is the massive eye of the system, and it's very, very powerful. Again, uh, I don't know if it reached Category 5 status or not. Certainly the pressure did, and the winds were very close. This is one of these situations where... After the hurricane season, they may upgrade it and recategorize it as a five. So it's possible. Uh, if we look at the actual uh, conditions here, you can see they sustained winds 86 on the Air Force Base and then gusting up to 130 miles an hour. So and that's when I believe that's when the wind conditions of the anemometer failed there. So it may have been higher than that. This was the in stunningly impressive uh, infrared satellite picture. I mean, Jesus, you just don't see that every day. Approaching Panama City, really impressive. And uh, this is the radar, of course, was off the coast. Now, the recent images actually show it uh, on the coast, inland, and of course, it's still not weakening very rapidly. This is the one here from, I guess, this is the radar as of 1 o'clock this afternoon. And the new radar pictures are showing that the center has finally filled in, and it is finally uh, weakening a little bit as it passes just to the west of Tallahassee. So that's the good news. And, of course, this is the readings here. You can see it uh, just officially so you can see what we're talking about. This is 915 millibars. You can see the blue line, which is um, and the red line, which is the maximum of sea level pressure. So there's the red line. You can see it getting down to around 919, nine, uh, something like that. Very impressive. And then again over here, a second reading. And the flight level winds, the blue line, you see a max up here of uh, near 100 and... Uh, 40 knots, which is really impressive in this reading here and here. And the uh, surface winds, uh, again, estimated, you can see a blue peak here, another one here, just under 125 knots, which is, you know, 150 miles an hour or a little higher. So, again, very close to Category 5 status. All right, if we take a look at the um, tracks here, this is the 12Z hurricane tracks. You can see all of the hurricane models uh, and very, very strong assessment agreement here. They all, you can see it going through this whole area, and um, uh, clearly uh, this is a Norfolk right here. You can see Norfolk, I put that out over. This is Hatteras here. So most of the hurricane models are taking it between Norfolk and Hatteras, very close to Elizabeth City. And uh, in case you're missing, you did not see this here is Raleigh right there. So you can see most of them bring it right over Raleigh. So uh, it's going to be an impressive system here. And because it's very close to the coast, the eastern side of the system uh, you know, when you have your low pressure area here, the eastern side of the system will still be bringing in strong winds and moisture into the system. So even though the western side of it is going to fall apart very quickly because of the dry air being pulled into it, the eastern side is not. And as a result, when you look at the radar on Thursday night or Friday morning, it may actually look like kind of a coastal storm as opposed to a tropical system. Now this here is the uh, British model, and you can see what it was doing from midday today. It takes it over very close to Raleigh, and you can see very close to Norfolk in southeastern Virginia and Hampton Roads into the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, this was the uh, GFS, the improved one, the FV3, and again, very similar. Look, very similar. Excellent, excellent model agreement. And then uh, here is the GFS, same sort of thing, right into Hampton Roads and then the little portion of the Chesapeake Bay. And finally, here are the European Ensembles, the 6Z run, and you can see again. Uh, very clearly here that uh, a big track south to just to the south and east of Norfolk 
it might clip Norfolk or Sandbridge, Virginia Beach, but definitely passing, on the other hand, it also passes North Vatteris. So Elizabeth City, the Albemarle Sound, uh, you know, your, your area, you're going to get pretty good clock of this. So is Raleigh, I think. Now let's take a look at the track. This is the European, the afternoon run on the European. And again, you can look at the GFS, it's almost identical. I just, I'm just not going to put models up there for no reason. I mean, the, there's not much difference here. You could use the GFS F 3 the British model, whatever you want, but they all have the same thing. You can see the system here for two o'clock on Thursday, and it's pretty close to the North Carolina, Virginia border. It's just the Southeast of Charlotte. And then this here is uh, 8 p.m. on Thursday evening. Now it's very close to Raleigh, just to the southeast of Raleigh, I think. And then between Raleigh and Fayetteville. And then here is 2 a.m. on Friday morning. Now you can see it's over Elizabeth City, about to go into Virginia Beach, maybe Chesapeake, that sort of thing, and then head out into the uh, open waters again. And then finally, by 8 a.m., this thing is long gone, and the winds are very strong off the coast again. You can see that the winds are really pick up here um, and call up a good mark here so we can see it uh, the winds really pick up here uh, these black the orange stuff here is 55 60 knots up in here so uh, when it's going this way you can see these are maximum winds uh, we're gonna get stronger on the coast obviously and then uh, moves off the coast it begins to intensify now this is the rainfall mounts this is the European model the European model for some reason in Southeast Virginia has backed off the heavy rains. I know that we get three, four inches of rain, but not that five, six, seven, eight inches. That's mostly North Carolina. I'm not sure why the Europeans doing that. Certainly the high resolution GFS, the um, the FV3 does not do that. As you can see, uh, this uh, purple stuff in here, um, right in here, this blue stuff, that's eight inches of rain. And this uh, here is five inches in here, this whole five inches here, here. And you can see it also here, five inches again, continuing. So. Uh, you know, I still think it's going to be a significant ma major rain event here. Now, in terms of the timing of the event, when does this happen? I'm sure you, that's the next question you wanted to ask. So here we go. So the red lines show where the rain will be by 4 a.m. on Thursday morning, tomorrow morning, 4 a.m. Okay, so you can see the red lines here very nicely. And the rains, notice the rains are up in this whole area. You see that? Okay. But not yet in Raleigh, not yet in, just reaching Charlotte. Now, the red red. The blue line represents where it will be at uh, 1 p.m. on Thursday. And now at this point, we can see that the rain rain area has now reached uh, past Roanoke, Lynchburg. We have rain up into West Virginia, Western Maryland, and it is now approached or just to the push to the east of Raleigh and has reached, let's say, Fayetteville and Moorhead City, New Bern, that sort of thing, raining down by Wilmington. Most of South Carolina's got rain, Greensboro. Charlotte, so on and so forth. And then Southwest Virginia, Roanoke has steady rain, so on and so forth. But it has not yet reached central eastern Virginia. And the green line shows by 4 p.m. on Thursday, tomorrow evening, the rain has probably reached up towards D.C. and Richmond and into eastern North Carolina. But it has not yet reached Hatteras, Elizabeth City, Hampton Roads, or the Chesapeake Bay or the Delmarva area. Okay. Then by um, this next image shows us as we continue it, the violet areas, the pink areas, that shows where the rain will be 8 p.m. Thursday. At this point, the rain has contracted, and we can just see this general pink area of rain um, very nicely. Um, you know, just the whole pink area right here, you see that. That's where the rain's going to be. So the coastal storm will be here, or the tropical storm Michael will be there, and that's where you be getting your rain. Okay, now the brown areas represent where the rain will be at 11 p.m. on Thursday evening. Notice it's pulling away from Raleigh at this point. It has ended in Lynchburg and Charlottesville, about to end in D.C. and Philadelphia. And finally, the orange area represents where the western edge of the rain will be, 5 a.m. Wednesday, a Friday morning. So at that point, all the rain is now over Jersey and the Delmarva. The rain has ended in, in over at Hampton Roads and northeast North Carolina. Okay, let's talk about the winds here. Now, this is uh, the, the European model from this afternoon. And you can see that these are maximum wind guts here. And these are some pretty impressive numbers. Um, this pink stuff in here, that is uh, winds gusting up to 80, you know, 90 uh, miles an hour. Yikes. Near Hatteras, that's a bit higher than I thought it was going to be. Now, uh, by uh, 2 a.m. on a Friday morning, this is again, this is 2 a.m. Friday morning. This is 2 a.m. on Friday. So this means covers all of Thursday night into Friday morning. 
Uh, we have winds of 50 miles an hour over much of Hampton Roads, up near 50 over Richmond. And then you can see Raleigh has winds gusting up to 65 miles an hour. And then that way Fayetteville, oh, 65 to 70. So pretty darn stormy here Thursday night. This is not nothing, folks. And then here, this is uh, Friday morning. And if we look closely, we can see again uh, winds, hurricane force just offshore. And then 60 miles, 65 miles an hour in Hampton Roads, so all the Chesapeake Bay, 70 on the Virginia Eastern Shore, and then still 70 miles an hour over portions of the Outer Banks, and 50s to near 60 over Elizabeth City, uh, well, I guess to the east of Greenville, but definitely Stony Creek, Franklin, Williamsburg. Yeah, definitely east, just east of Richmond, into the into the Mob Jack Bay, definitely up there. Even Richmond still has winds to 40 or 45 miles an hour Friday morning at 8 a.m. So, you know, the power loss, there could be significant power disruptions here, especially east of I-95. This is the NAM showing the radar. And again, I just want to give you an idea of what this, this will be. This is 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock Thursday night, tomorrow night, 10 p.m., okay? So this is uh, 10 p.m., on Thursday, just to give you an idea, 10 p.m. Thursday, all right? Look at the, there's the eye, the center of the system. You can see the huge bands feeding in this way. Now, what this is doing, this is driving the water, okay, from the coast into Sandbridge, into the lower portions of the Chesapeake Bay, into Hampton Roads Harbor, and the whole portion of the bay there. So that's going to be a bit of an issue, those strong east winds. And I think that's being overlooked here in terms of the flooding of the coastal tide a little bit. Now, this here is where it's going to be, again, Friday morning on the European, very similar to what we're seeing here. That is 10, at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Thursday. This is 2 a.m. on Friday. It's right over the northern outer banks. You can see the lows right here. Okay, so this is Sandbridge. This is Norfolk. Right here is Elizabeth City. So there you are, Curry Tuck Nags Head. And again, this sort of flow is doing this. Now, it's driving the water uh, in an easterly direction, all of this strong winds, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour, driving the water into the lower portion of the Chesapeake Bay. I, I think this is being overlooked by a lot of people. I think it's going to be a little worse than what people are thinking. I just want to let you know. So let's break this down a little bit. Okay, so here, here we go. Uh, what about my area? What about my area? Get this all the time. Okay, so i uh, give you an idea of what's happening here. If from D.C. down to Charlottesville to Danville to Greensboro, Everybody east west of this line, okay? It's not a big deal. It's going to rain. Okay? A little windy. Not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Okay? That's that. Uh, the worst area is clearly going to be... Um, it's going to be, uh, let's say, the Virginia Eastern Shore, east of Richmond, east of Emporia, Raleigh just to the east, and then down in this direction here. This is pretty much Interstate 95. Okay, that's pretty much Interstate 95, I-95, east of that. That's where it's going to be the worst. And the worst conditions, obviously, will be in this area here. So uh, that's where it's going to be. Now, in between, okay, if you're in the Virginia Piedmont, so you're, let's say you're west of Richmond, you're in Farmville, Powhatan, you're Danville, Southfield, Boston, Greensboro, you'll get some wind, you'll get some rain. Charlotte's going to have a lot of wind and a lot of rain early, uh, or, you know, on, on Wednesday night, Thursday. And then as the low comes east, the, the rain shield will shut off very quickly. So, again, uh, the rain will cut off very quickly over a lot of these western areas. So you ought to keep that in mind as well. And that's going to reduce your rainfall amounts. That's why you end up with this. Notice where the rain shuts off. As soon as you go up towards Charlottesville, west of Lynchburg, uh, out toward in the mountains of North Carolina, the rain shuts off. So there you go. Okay. Now, the other issue here of concern is Hampton Roads and the lower Virginia eastern shore. In 1998, there was a hurricane by the name of Bonnie. I don't know if many of you remember this or not, but this is the Wikipedia page. You can take a look at it. And what the track did was the track came inland as a Category 2 hurricane, and it made landfall at Moorhead City, and then it turned northeast over eastern North Carolina and southeast Virginia. Now, at that particular time in September, there was a lot of rain on the ground. A lot of the areas were super saturated, flooded. There were swamps and that sort of thing. Um, you know, Dismal Swamp that spilled its banks out of the Blackwater Swamp. And this kind of compounded things because what happened is Bonnie ended up holding together as it went through Hampton Roads much stronger than it normally would have. And as a result, there was winds to 80 miles an hour throughout much of Hampton Roads from this storm. 
The Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel had a wind gust of 105 miles an hour. I am not kidding you. So, and let me show you what I mean here by this. This is the radar image, okay? So this is from uh, Moorhead City. Now, this is when Bonnie is making landfall. And let me get a good marking here so you can see this here because I'm using black. I need to change this. Uh, I guess we can use, uh, yeah, let's try the white marker. So right here is uh, Bonnie, okay, it's made landfall. Now what happens is it comes up, okay, just inland, which is exactly like Michael's going to be, just inland from the coast. So you're still getting strong circulation here. Now here's the eye. The eye's falling apart. You see that? But it's approaching the Albemarle Sound, the Great Dismal Swamp, and the grounds are super saturated. All of those things are exactly what we're going to have as Michael comes up to, on Thursday into Friday morning. Heavy ground, super saturated, over the Albemarle Sound, over the Dismal Swamp. Okay, so far so good. Now look what happens. Now the glow is off the coast, and it begins to re-intensify significantly. And you're getting all this wind now wrapping around and getting pulled into Hampton Roads and the open waters of Chesapeake Bay. And they got blasted. I mean blasted. Totally under forecast the event. Bonnie was the first time they had hurricane force winds in Hampton Roads since Donna, 1960. 28 years earlier. No, 38 years earlier, excuse me. So, I'm telling you, I got worried. I think this thing has potential to be much worse in Hampton Roads when people are thinking. So, uh... Should you evacuate? No, this is not an evacuation type of situation. This is a high wind situation. Some coastal flooding. Again, if it's in, or in a nor'easter, your area floods in Hampton Roads, and you have to leave or evacuate, be prepared for that sort of thing. But this is not a mass evacuation, in my opinion. What this is is a lot more wind and rain, especially the wind being funneled into the Bay Area because of the track of the system, than what I think a lot of people are forecasting. And the other point to remember is that all these... Let me go up here. All these winds, like the, from this image here, let me clear it out, from the European. The European initialized this system, uh, uh, Michael, at around 950 millibars. And when it made landfall, as we all know, it was 915, 919, 920. So the European was way too weak with this system. And yet we're still getting these sorts of winds from the model. Now, does that mean the wind is going to be higher because the pressure was a lot higher, a lot more intense when Michael made landfall today? this afternoon it probably it could mean that yes it could so again you know like i said i'm worried about hampton roads and lower virginia eastern shore i really am in terms of getting surprised by this so again my point here is the risk that condition is going to be worse than forecasted for southeast virginia and eastern north carolina maybe i'm wrong i don't think i am we'll see and finally once this clears out of here you know saturday is going to be a cold day folks even all day Saturday, temperatures are going to be falling into the 50s, okay, even by Hampton Roads eventually. And you're going to have winds on Saturday all day, 15, 25 miles an hour through all of Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina. And with temperatures, you know, 55, 60 degrees, it's going to feel pretty darn cold given what we've been experiencing. And then Sunday morning, look at these temperatures. Yeah, that doesn't suck. That's autumn. That's not bad. Okay, this is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. Catch me on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page, and we'll see how this works out.